Welcome back to Donny Boy 13's channel, and we're back again today with the fourth episode of this series. We are in our Watford Transfer Teams series, and if you've missed last episode, please go check it out because we are still in the Premier League. And spoiler alert, we did quite well. We ended up being tenth in the Premier League last year with with this this team here. Very very good team it was. We got a lot of good signings out of it. A lot of players here, you, you well, you might not recognise all the names, but there's a few names there definitely that you will know. And yeah, we did so well last season, so this time around we're just going to see what we can do again. Of course, as I say every episode, the whole team has been transfer listed. I've had a little look through the free agents, there's some big names there that I'm definitely going to be getting in. And the transfer list seems a bit empty at the minute, but we'll keep our eye on it. And we'll see how our team could do this year. So, the next time you hear from me is when I've sorted out my free agent signings. Okay, here we go then. Start of a new season. The new free agent signings just been brought in. You can probably see the big name at the top there, but we'll leave him till last. So, we've signed Rafinha, the ex-Barcelona man. We've signed Billy Gilmore, ex-Chelsea man, youngster. 79 rated, so very high potential. I'm very surprised he was in the in the free agents, to be honest. Signed Luka Milivojevic from Crystal Palace. Who's, who was in the free agents. We signed Tarek Lamptey, another very good youngster, 74 rated. Not quite as high as Billy Gilmore, but definitely potential to improve. We've got Nicholas Nkulu back. We sold him and we've signed him back for free. He's going to be one of our centre-back pairing. We've got Pizzi, uh, Portuguese superstar from the Portuguese league. I think he's Benfica normally, but he's signed for us. He's 80 rated now, a little bit older. And speaking of older, Jordan Henderson. 33 years old, but he's still 86 rated. He is the absolute superstar of our team now. We have a big name, and I'm hoping we keep the big name. I hope nobody comes in and takes him from us. But he's definitely going to be the staple of this team. He's going to be that man in the centre, controlling the game, and hopefully leading us to European football, I'm going to say, this year. It would be lovely to get, but I don't know whether that's realistically possible. We'll have to see got a lot of offers just come in so we've got offers from for Krykoviak we've got an offer from Inter Milan for 6.8 which is accepted and we've got an offer from Torino for 7.4 which is also accepted and then the next one on our list we've got Phil Jones offered from Lille 3.6 million we'll accept that also it's going to be sad to see him go but Nkulu is obviously here now 12.5 million for Awani. I paid 5.5 at the start of last season. He did score 11 goals in 12 games, I believe, at the end of last season. So he had a very, very good showing for the end of the season. Probably was the man who carried us to the heights that we got to. But 12.5 million, he's off to Ibar in the Spain. So goodbye, Awani. And then finally, we've got Dan Byrne leaving us to go to Lazio for 5.1 million pounds. Again, it's going to be quite sad to see him go. Them two came in when we were desperate for centre-backs and did a good enough job for us in that role. So, see you later. Here we go then. We've got more transfer offers coming in. We've got an offer for Pascal Gross, £40,000. And Manolo Gabbiadini, 75-rated striker. Actually, that's probably going to help us out quite a lot because I don't have that many decent strikers anymore. So, if Gabbiadini can keep that sort of rating... That'd be very, very good for me. So I'm happy to accept that for Gross. I'll sort out the others in a minute. And then we've got an offer from Crystal Palace for Jack Harrison. £19.7 million for Jack Harrison. The man I got in the free agents last season. Coming at, coming in big, selling for 19.7 to Crystal Palace. And then finally, Na Nampalis Mendy. Going to be going to... Cadiz for 1.15 and Gaspar 71 rated left midfielder worth 2.2 million so that's going to be interesting to see how he does there see how Gaspar does when he comes in that will be a good thing to have a look at so there we go bad news the Mendy deals fallen through because Gaspar did not want to come and join us for some reason so I mean my bad but Mendy is sticking around for a little while hopefully some other team will come in for him and we'll, we'll, he'll get to go on to pastures new. The say, exact same thing has happened with the Pascal Gross deal. Gabbiadini not wanting to come to the club for some reason, so we're going to have to keep Gross around. Not disappointed by that, though, because I do quite like Gross. 
probably not going to get that much game time, so I'm hoping somebody else does try and come in and take him off our hands just for his sake. But Gabbiadini was the one that didn't want to join us for some reason, so that deal has fallen through, unfortunately. Offer from for Stephen Forbes this time from Defensa. 1.45 million. This man I got in a in a swap deal last season, so I mean he's never played a game for me, so it's good to see him go out and earn me a bit of money. 1.4 million from Defensa. We go. We got an offer for Martin Braithwaite from SL Benfica. 2.6 million plus that man David Tavares, 24 years old, 4.3 million value and 73 rated. Not terrible player actually to be coming in. But that does mean that we're losing one of our best strikers from last season. Him and Awani both out the door now. We'll have to see who we can get to replace them. For the third time already this season, we've had a transfer full through. Martin Braithwaite is not going to Benfica. And that means Tavares is not coming to us because... Not because of me this time. Because they couldn't come to an agreement on the contract with Braithwaite. However, we do have another offer now for Danny Rose. The left back like my main left back basically from Colne or Cologne, however you say it but yeah he's he's going to be going to Col Colne Cologne for 2.5 million plus Paolo Oliveira providing that everything goes through of course so let's hope that it does because Oliveira looks like he could definitely be in my team at the centre back role so I'll try and get this one sorted. And it'd be sad to see Rose go, but it'd be a good good player to get in in Oliveira. It's another transfer offer for Martin Braithwaite now from Sheffield United. 6.7 million. Shouldn't fall through this time because there's no other player involved. Martin Braithwaite, good to have you, but it's going to be good to see you go, to be honest. And then Bonaventura as well. One of the best players for us last season. 33 years of age now. And he's going to Strasbourg for 11.1 .1 million pounds. For now, from BSC Young Boys for Dwight Gale. Dwight Gale, 1.3 million. He didn't really get as much game time as he probably expected to when he was coming in. So it's good to see him go, and hopefully he'll get some game time at Young Boys and be able to progress there. For now, for Charlie Masonda, he's somebody that I ended up signing as a pre-contract at the end of last season. Uh, 77 rated, very very good, he's a right midfielder, probably won't get too much game time now though because of PZ coming in. 13.8 million pound offer from Bournemouth, I think that's very fair, I think he's going to be on his way to Bournemouth. Another offer for somebody I got as a free agent at the start of last season I believe, it's Rakim Harper, the youngster that's at West Brom in real life. Still only 23 years of age, 74 rated, could potentially get a lot higher than that if progressed well, but he's not going to get much game time for me. Cagliari offering 5.4 million, I think that's a good move for him. Definitely will be playing, so we'll see how he ends up. 5.4 million coming my way for it. And for the second time in this series, we're going to be selling Domingos Cunha. He's going to Huesca this time for £9.7 million. I got him back for free, don't forget after Sevilla bought him from us and then released him. So 9.7 million for a man I've got for free is very, very good. And I know he's going to be good in the future. 75 rated at just the age of 23. But, I mean, it's it's the series we have to accept. For Christian Tello now. He signed for us for free last season. Has done very, very well for us. 78 rated. 32 years of age now, so not going to get too much more out of him, I don't think. But Nice is going to be signing him for 11.2 million pounds. Biggest name we've ever seen on the transfer list has just come up and I've signed him. It's Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. We signed him from Real Madrid in this game. 84 rated. He's probably the best striker we've ever had in this series. We're paying him quite a lot of money, but we signed him for just 20 million. So he definitely sorts out my striker position and he'll be good for at least another couple of years. He's he's 34, so he is old, but he definitely will be good enough to to lead me to hopefully where I want to be this season. Okay, we've got an offer now for Daniel Amati. Offer from Getafe, 9.7 million. He is my starting right back at the moment, but I do have Lamptey to just come in that spot, so I'm not too disappointed about letting him go. We'll just have to see if Lamptey can, can take the role, fill his boots in that right back spot. We've had an offer outside the transfer window again. This was very prevalent last year. 
It's from Fulham for Chenk Tosson, 3.9 million for the 74 rated 32 year old. Obviously he's going to be going. Uh, we don't really need him anymore to be honest. We've got Aubameyang, we've got a couple of people to play in behind Aubameyang as well if need be. So Tosson did well for us when he was here, but don't need him no more. We're not in the transfer window as you know, but we have an offer from Leicester City for Pascal Gross. 7.7 .7 million I will accept. He's not getting much game time, even though being 77 rated, I have too many good midfielders for him to really be considered for a starting spot. So I think he's probably best going elsewhere, and Leicester seem to be the sort of team that would use him quite well. Offer for Kieran Clark, 690,000 from Istanbul, Basakashir. I mean, he has to be accepted, so he'll be leaving at the start of the next transfer window. Another offer now for Nampali Smendi, 3.7 million from Celta Vigo. And he's going to be leaving at the start of the transfer window also. So it would be sad to see him go, but he's not really getting much game time, so maybe it's best for him. For Mamadou Fall now, or Fal. He's the guy that we got as a as a um, swap deal for one of our players last season. So, I mean, he's not played a game for me, I don't think. Maybe in a cup or whatever, but I'm happy to let him go to Nunes for 1.2 million. So we're at that midway point in the season and look at us go. We are currently sat 6th in the Premier League. I didn't actually expect it, even though at the start of the season I said I wanted to challenge for European football. 6th uh, was not part of my plans. I mean, look at that. Zero draws completely. Just wins and losses. 8 losses and 11 wins. Uh, it's just been incredible. I don't really know how it's happened, to be honest. I'm going to have a, a little look. Oh, that's... That's probably how it's happened. We've got Aubameyang who scored 20 goals for us this season. And then also on there we've got Gilmore on 11. So that is just ridiculous. Them two men obviously carrying the squad. Let's have a little look at how the rest of the squad are getting on and the stats. Goals wise, I think we know who's top of this just by the... He's being the top goal scorer in the league. We've got 20 goals for Aubameyang. Fantastic. From 17 games. Oh my goodness, this man has still got it at the ripe old age of 34. He's destroying. Then we've got Billy Gilmore with 11 goals in 22 games and 13 assists there as well. I can already tell you that's going to be the top assist. Jordan Henson with the three goals, also Pizzi getting three. Tadic on two, Milivojevic, Rafinha, Tosin all with just the one. So there's only, only been like eight goal scorers for my whole team. And Aubameyang and Gilmore seem to be the ones getting us all the way up there in sixth position we've got 13 assists for Gilmar as I said Pizzi was six Milivojevic with three and then Henderson Aubameyang Tadic and Gross all with just a one I mean I don't know if we'll be able to keep this up throughout the season but hopefully we can keep ourselves in the fight for European football and I'll see you come transfer window time for any transfers in or out that we seem to be having. Made one more sign in. We've got uh, Mattia De Shiglio, 78 rated 31 year old right back slash left back. Probably be playing at the left back role for me. Sign in from Leon in this game. Obviously he's in Italy in real life. Uh, yeah, he's signing for 7.5 million from the transfer window. I think that's that's a um, pretty good signing for us. Definitely going to be a starting player for us anyway. So. We should hopefully be able to use him to progress this team even further and hopefully really fight for those European spots. Signed two more people from the transfer list. We've got Axel Werner, a goalkeeper who was at Atletico Madrid. Signed for £3 million. Probably going to just be there to hopefully take over from Forster. I don't know if he's actually probably higher rated than Forster is at the moment. So, 27 years old, still got a little bit of room to improve before he starts the, the big decline so hopefully he can do quite well for us and then I've got in Andre Gray again just for a bit of nostalgia 2.8 million for the original Watford man signing back from Bologna or Bologna or however you say it for 74 rated now so still not low rated 32 years of age he's doing well and then we've got one more player in on a pre-contract agreement that's Jack Robinson the centre back slash left wing back from Sheffield United coming to join us for next season okay so right now we have a something a little bit different for you because the season's over but for the first time in this whole series I am in a cup final I'm in the final of the FA Cup against Tottenham Hotspur 
their team is looking absolutely ridiculous compared to what mine is. Mine's not bad though, mine's not bad at all, but we'll just have to see if we can get anything out of this game. Maybe somehow pull the victory and win our first trophy. Well, I say first trophy. Actually, no, it is our first trophy because we didn't get the championship trophy, did we, when we got promoted? So this would literally be our first trophy if we can win it. Let's see if we can. Quick sim. Something out of this game. We lose 3 now. Oh, well. Too good to be true. But anyway, guys, as I say, the season is over. Sad to, to not come away with silverware at the end of it. However... We have somehow took this team of misfits and wantaways and we have finished 7th in the table. 7th, 19 wins, 3 draws, 16 losses, 71 goals scored, so we scored a lot of goals, but also conceding 67, which is far too many. But 7th in the table puts us in European competition for next season, which is fantastic. Our final season is going to include the Europa League with the team like Watford with this team. And you might be thinking, how the hell have they done that with that team? Well, Aubameyang scored 27 goals. Top goal scorer, Billy Gilmore scored 24 goals. I don't know how they've done it myself, personally. But I've got two of my team in the top 10 of the goal scoring which is just ridiculous in my opinion right let's have a look at all the rest of the goal scorers so as we know the top two oh 31 in all for Aubameyang 31 goals in 39 games 27 and 36 in the Premier League then we have 26 goals in 45 for Billy Gilmore with 24 of them coming in the Premier League 5 for Pizzi 4 for Milivojevic and Tadic 3 for Henderson, Rafinha, Eggestein and Alexis Sanchez. Two apiece for Nkulu, Gray, Lamptey, DeSiglio, Willock and Dykes. All with the one goal. And now, let's see for the assists. We've got Billy Gilmore top of the assist chart. He had a fantastic season. 26 goals and 16 assists. I don't know how you're going to be beating that. And we've got Pizzi with 10 assists. We've got Milivojevic and Henderson with 4. Aubameyang with three, then Rafinha, Tadic with two, and Matic and Hart, Rory Hart, must have been in a cup game, getting the one assist there. So very, very good season to to round out our fourth season of this. We have one more season remaining. It's going to be the final season. We are in Europe for the final season, and we're going to see if we can take this team, plus whatever signings we're going to have from next season, and potentially go far in the Europe or potentially go higher up in the league I think it's going to be a lot lot harder to finish above 7th in this table because obviously Aubameyang getting older now not going to be as good Billy Gilmore still going to be good enough but obviously they are probably going to be people who are going to be leaving us because of the rules of this series we have to list every player at the start of the season except all transfers so I hope you'll be here for the final episode of this mini-series for Watford, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.